principles in order to guide other people towards the path of God. But then people came and started saying that Jesus himself is God. Did Jesus himself ever say, I am God, so worship me? Did he ever approve of being called the Son of God? The Holy Bible states, demons came out of many people shouting, you are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak. Furthermore, there are numerous verses which confirm that Jesus accepted the title of teacher and prophet and that he referred to himself as the Son of God. Baby, you can call me a superman Hey guys, welcome back to our channel It's your boy, Jesse Keegan And your girl, Fanny Lungo And we are Fanny Jesse Thank you so much guys for subscribing to our channel You the realest and real Thank you so much Thank you so much guys for subscribing to our channel You the realest MVP We want to thank everybody out there For um, not only subscribing Just, you know, watching our videos And giving us reactions We also want to thank everybody out there We've been able to just hit that notification bell and uh, to be the first people to watch our videos whenever we drop our videos. Another important thing, guys, if you're new to this channel, we are Fanny and Jesse. I go by the name Jesse, and she goes by the name Fanny. And she's my girlfriend, and we normally do reaction videos. We normally do um, vlogs. We normally do challenges. And if you feel like you want to challenge us, just let us know on the comment section below. And we're gonna do it for you guys and if you have any kind of reaction just let us know of late we've been getting a lot of reaction from people out there they've been sending us a ton of reactions and we've been doing a lot of a lot of reaction and we've been doing much of um like religious type of reaction because a lot of people pro probably find it more uh that's what's going to mind yeah that's what uh, that's what uh, from our comment section. yeah that's what it's on demand on our comment section as she said um yes and you know what so without any further ado today we're gonna react to um today we're gonna react to 10 things about jesus in islam and this one right here was suggested by who yeah. no 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 and this one right there was, was not and this one right here was not suggested by anybody we just felt like maybe this one is gonna also like uh maybe pass up information to people out there or maybe to us to and yeah so without any further ado let's sit down and if you want to react with us just, just come together and react let's get it there's something you should know about jesus in islam The Muslim greeting of Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be upon you, is not only something which was practiced by the Holy Prophet, but also by Jesus. The Holy Bible says, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. In Islam, we believe in the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ to the Virgin Mary, who is regarded as one of the great ladies of light. She is also the only woman mentioned in the Quran by name. The Holy Quran states, she, Mary, said, O oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched? me. God said, so it will be, for God creates what he wills. Jesus is mentioned more times in the Holy Quran than Muhammad. While the Holy Quran is a message sent to all of humanity by God through the Holy Prophet, Muhammad is mentioned four times while Jesus is mentioned 25 times. Muslims believe in the great miracles performed by Jesus the son of Mary. Jesus brought the dead back to life by the will of God. He healed the lepers by the will of God. And he walked on water by the will of God. As well as these miracles, the Holy Quran also testifies that Jesus spoke from the cradle when he was just a baby. They said, how can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? Jesus said, verily I am a servant of God. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. Muslims believe that Christians are the closest to them in affection. The Holy Quran states, you will certainly find the nearest in affection to those who believe to be those who say we are Christian. This is because there are priests and monks among them and because they do not behave arrogantly. Which may be part of the wisdom behind why Imam Khomeini gave gifts to Christians on Christmas Eve during his exile to France. Number six. 
Islam is the one true divine religion. But believe it or not, Muslims do not believe that Christians and Jews will go to hell. The Holy Quran states, surely those who believe and those who are Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and does good, they shall have their reward from their Lord. And there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. The criteria set down by the Holy Quran for anyone who wishes to earn the rewards of God are number one, to believe in God in the final day, and number two, to do good deeds. This is for anyone who is not properly introduced to Islam. For the Quran also says, surely the true religion with Allah is Islam. Number seven. Muslims do not believe in the Trinity. Many Christians believe that God is composed of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that these three are in fact one. But the Holy Quran states, people of the book, do not go to excess in your religion, and do not say anything about God except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was nothing more than a messenger of God. So believe in God and his messengers, and do not speak of a trinity. Stop this. That is better for you. God is only one God. He is far above having a son. Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God himself, or that he was the literal son of God. God, i.e. Allah, is the limitless, the omnipresent, in all times and all places. The moment somebody attributes to God a bodily form, they have limited God in their own perception. This isn't God. God can't be seen with the physical eye because anything that can be seen has been limited by the mere fact that the perception has been able to grasp that thing. When Imam Ali, the first Imam and the fourth Khalif was asked, have you ever seen God? He replied, I do not worship the God I have not seen and that the human eye cannot see Allah. Rather, the eyes of the heart can perceive him. Jesus was one of those who understood this and God gave him the ability to perform miracles in order to guide other people towards the path of God. But then people came and started saying that Jesus himself is God. Did Jesus himself ever say, I am God, so worship me? Did he ever approve of being called the Son of God? The Holy Bible states, demons came out of many people shouting, you are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak. Furthermore, there are numerous verses which confirm that Jesus accepted the title of teacher and prophet and that he referred to himself as the Son of Man. The Holy Quran also confirms, and remember when Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O oh, Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to men, worship me and my mother as two gods besides Allah? Jesus will reply, glory be to you. Never did I say to them, ought except what you did command me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Does the Holy Bible also contain verses which chime with this? Yes. The Holy Bible states, by myself, I can do nothing, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. In another place it says, For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. Some might argue that Jesus here is clearly referring to God as his begotten Father quoting this verse of the Holy Bible. For God so loved this world that he gave his only son. Could it be that the term son of God in the Bible means something entirely different to what many Christians have taken it to mean? Son of God is actually used in other places in the Bible to refer to other than Jesus. David is referred to as the son of God. In another place it says, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. And yet in another place it says, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son son of Adam, the son of God. Could it be that the term father used in the Bible actually refers to something that corresponds to the Rabb that Islam teaches, i.e. the one who nourishes and sustains, and that this omnipotent, nourishing, sustaining God is the father of all people and all creation? The Holy Bible states, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yet many Christians argue that he was the begotten literal son of God, since he had no father. If being born without a father makes one God or the son of God, then surely Adam is more entitled, since he was born without a mother or a father. Nay, the reality is that nobody is the biological or the begotten or the literal son of God. God is way beyond these 
lower animalistic functions of reproduction. God is unique, God the source of everything. He has not fathered anyone nor is he fathered and there is nothing comparable to him. <laughs> Muslims do not believe that Jesus was crucified. Now this is a core Christian belief and it relates to the concept of atonement. According to this belief, Jesus died in order to save mankind from sin. But Muslims do not accept this, believing that God is just and that every person is held accountable for his own actions. You do something good, you're gonna be rewarded. That you do something bad and don't repent, mm -hmm. the Holy Quran states. So whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it, and whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it. And also that a burdened soul cannot bear the burden of another. Would it be just to punish Jesus for a sin committed by someone else? The Islamic perspective is that Jesus was never crucified. The Quran says that they said, we have killed the Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God, but they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, though it was made to appear like that to them. God raised him up to himself, God is mighty wise. Did any of the disciples or the writers of the Gospels see the crucifixion? In Mark 14.50 it says that the disciples forsook Jesus and fled. According to this they ran away and did not witness the crucifixion. In fact what we do have is John 20.17 telling us that Mary Magdalene approached the sepulchre to find it empty and then she saw Jesus and astonished went to touch him to which Jesus responded, touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So Jesus even in the Bible is seen as unharmed and he's ascending to God. But if not Jesus, who was actually crucified? Whoever it was cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It doesn't sound like Jesus, any man, let alone a messenger who has a strong connection to the all merciful, all powerful God and trusts him would never ever utter such words of despair. If you have absolute trust in someone, you would never say, why have you left me alone? Why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? And there are many other reasons for why Jesus was never crucified. And as the Quran says, it was just made to seem so. <laughs> Muslims believe in the second coming of Christ. Jesus will return along with the Mahdi and together they will establish peace, justice and balance across the planet. The Holy Prophet said Mahdi will turn his face to Jesus and he will say to him, go ahead and say the prayer. Jesus will say, the prayer has been set up only for you. So Jesus will pray behind a man who is among my sons. Thus will they pray together to the one God and thus will truth be established on the earth forever. Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Wow, what do you think? So if Jesus wasn't crucified, mm -hmm. what happened to him? He ascended. He just said that? Yep, that's according to the Quran. The Bible said that he was crucified. That's why we have a mix up. I don't know which one is true, which one is not. Hmm. But have you had this before? Had what? That Jesus was not crucified? Mm -hmm. Yes, the Islam believe that Jesus wasn't crucified. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus is not, a, like, is not a son of God. Like the way we live. But he's not. Yeah. But in the Bible, to say the son of God. But then the Bible also is calling other people sons of God. Hmm. So much interpretation, so much confusion. I'm confused as um, he said something else. How come Jesus is mentioned more in the Quran? Yeah, in the Quran more than Muhammad. That's interesting. Maybe there's more significance when it comes to Jesus compared to Muhammad. I don't know. You think so? Yeah. Jesus came in first and then Muhammad came in last. Mm. Yeah. But they did the same thing. Yeah, maybe Jesus had a lot of weight, maybe he did more, he did the most. And, uh, Think so? yeah, probably. I mean, that's what I'm, I don't know what Muhammad did, but I feel like if he was mentioned, how many times? Jesus? Yeah. Maybe something plus times? Yeah, compared Muhammad to Muhammad. Times. But what do you think about the message? I mean, the message, the, the message is clear 
um, I'm here to learn, so um, I'm trying to actually grasp the fact that uh, in Islam, Jesus wasn't crucified, probably just ascended to heaven. He just came here to die for our sins and to serve mankind. I wonder what other books say, no? Uh, I don't know. And that he will return. What do? He what will, does the Bible say? Yeah, the Bible say that he will come to what? He will come like a thief. And I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. I think it's two of the same thing. Like the Bible says exactly what the Quran says mm -hmm. that Jesus will come back and make peace and whatnot. Because I feel okay. like almost, almost all the facts you brought up are shared. Yeah, course. yeah. Like it's almost the same thing. Like the Bible and the Quran are kind of similar. Maybe there's just few things that are not similar, and they tend not to agree Especially with each other. Especially the verses he yeah. brought forth, he brought very forth. very similar. So what do you think? Mm. Well, it's interesting to listen to. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Guys, it's, it's always just... good to know the point of view from other people's perspectives. Yeah, it opens. What been taught or yeah, that. it opens your your mind actually. That's exactly. You know. Yeah, I mean, let us know. What do you think about? Um, what do you think about ten things about Jesus in Islam? Mind blowing, mind blowing. Anyway, guys, if you feel that we've reacted to this video in a better way, no. Anyway, guys, if you feel that we've reacted to this video in a better way, just give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down our comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you feel about ten things about Jesus in Islam. And. Uh, yeah, I mean, just let us know. And the most important thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Then we keep on subscribing. Then we give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better, better content. Last but not the least, we'll see you in the next video. And peace out.